Hello and welcome back to Digging for Drez. This time around, we are very slowly heading into space with a probe bound for Jewel. Coming up over the uh, VAB there. We also have a new launch system. This rocket is quite clearly based on the Delta IV Heavy by the United Launch Alliance and unlike them it is a bit more squirrely and there's less thrust on takeoff but it is more than capable of launching this particular probe And I could have used a more conservative launcher, but I wanted to build a Delta IV. So, here we are. Can't really fault me for that. Now we're still about 16 days out from the actual uh, jewel window, but I think we can plan an encounter from here. So, what we'll do is once we're in space, I'll muck around with some maneuver nodes and send this probe on its way. But after that, we have yet more we need to do with the space station. So, once this probe is on its way, we'll launch a new cargo craft to do some more work on the station. And coming over nicely in a gravity, t gravity turn. Let's see if I can talk properly. Really, once the roll program is completed, it flies really, really nicely. We're approaching booster flame out. Boost the cutoff, separation, and throttle back up to 100%. I've always liked that about the Delta IV Heavy, how its center engine throttles down during launch. Fairing set. Confirmed. Now we can get a bit better look at this spacecraft. And Miko. Stage set. Stage two fired. So now we can have a look at this spacecraft. It's fairly large, and we've got a couple of tanks here that will be ditched. And it's at this point that I noticed that the fuel lines on those drop tanks don't seem to be where they should be. And I'm not sure if those will affect the performance of said tanks, but we shall see. So, just working up to circularization, and I'll s also skip forward until I've planned the encounter. So, see you in a minute. And I got an encounter without even needing to do a plane change. Yay me! So that's stage two out. Now we fire up 
on the probes engine, and I horrifically overestimated how quickly this would accelerate. Oh well, just extending panels. Oh boy, I hope we don't end up with a moon encounter. We shouldn't. Okay, it is feeding from those. Good. So this is essentially an asparagus staged probe. Once we're done with this tankage, it'd be ditched. Incidentally, this tank is completely empty. So yeah, I will plan a plane change at the uh, descending node, just so that we can be as efficient as possible. And hope that trajectory plays nice and allows me to plan my arrow braking maneuver. Because if not, I'm going to have to do some simulations. This is a rather nice looking probe, I think. Especially with this massive heat shield at the front. So it used about half of our drop tanks, essentially. So this is really our first interplanetary probe in this series. We've got a uh, Duna window coming up in 63 days. I don't know if I'll send Kerbals on that one or not. Depends on how much of the tech tree I've got by then. Oh, and there we are. We are now escaping Kerbin. So I've got about 45 seconds left in these tanks. So let's see how we're looking. Okay, we currently have a moon encounter, but we should be able to speed past that. So we're coming up on Duna. Fifteen seconds. I just hope it doesn't explode when I ditch these. Because if it does, oh boy. Four, three, two, one, empty. Yes, it didn't explode. Hooray! So now we're out past Duna. About a third of the way to Drez. And time for some learning. So you can see here, I basically stacked six materials bay experiments together. I've got six goos and two thermometers and two barometers. And I've done some uh, simulation testing with Kerbin and this probe should be stable in re-entry and coming into Kerbin's atmosphere 
down to 15 kilometers at three and a half kilometers per second is more than viable. Let's see, do we still have that moon encounter? Yes. Something tells me we're not going to be able to speed past that. Great. Now the thing about the dual system is that it's really necessary, essentially, to use gravity assists to get around. Yeah, coming up. There we are. There was an encounter there. Okay, I'm just going to cut it here. What's up, Perry Apps? Getting worse. Okay, we'll leave it there. So yeah, we have a dual encounter. Now, the game doesn't like going through so many SOI changes. So once I pass through this moon encounter, which is less than an hour away, I will be planning a plane change maneuver. And look at our altitude just spiral upwards. I suppose that's what happens when you're going at 3.8 kilometers per second. But now, it's time to do some more work on the space station. And here it is. The automated transfer vehicle. ATV. By the European Space Agency. I've always liked the design of it. With the uh, X-Wing style solar panels. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I have built a proper replication for it, which is up on my DeviantArt page. Of course, the launcher is not correct. The uh, ATV was originally the Ariane transfer vehicle, launched atop an Ariane 5. But this design is very much based off the ATV with the X pattern solar panels and separate cargo bay. There we are. It's varying away. And there is the solar panels. It's a really nice looking spacecraft. And the cargo bay on it can take either the boxes from Kerbal Attachment System or some other cargo such as life support. It doesn't take crew and it's not reusable but it's a good little spacecraft fairly cheap to use for this sort of thing. Now just working out the transfer. It does take a little while because I'm so close to the station's orbit, but it's very cheap in terms of delta V. Sunrise and sunset a few times, and I think I'll cut down to when I make final approach. Bit in the wrong place for a final approach. But now that we're close, we can target the necessary port. And move on in. <laughs> I 
I rather like this design of spacecraft. It's a great little truck. Now make sure I'm going to miss those solar panels. Now that we're closed, we can bring up the docking UI. It's very snappy and responsive, this particular craft. Very, very pleasant to manoeuvre. It doesn't rotate when I try to translate, and it doesn't translate when I try to rotate. So they roll very nice. And being that I've had a lot of trouble with the shuttle program, if you can even call it that, I think I might just use these. Because they're small, cheap, and carry a lot of cargo. Speaking of which, Natasha, it's your turn to get out and do the do the engineering jobs. Probably should have opened the bay before I got out, but it's okay. I'll just make sure we miss those panels. Now we can open the bay and see we've got plenty of room. At the moment we've got a couple of cargo containers, but this thing can hold life support as well. Now you've still got the spanner, that's good. You'll need that. Because the purpose of this mission is to make this station more work friendly. That's the wrong container. And also I've got some more batteries as you just saw because currently the station loses two-thirds of its power reserves just by going behind the planet while the lab is running. And that is not exactly ideal. Here we are. Turn off us, yes. How many can you carry? A lot, apparently. Anyway, yes, we've got some uh, ladders here that we're going to attach around the station to act as handholds. So, equip that. And there we are. One handhold. Because the problem is, when on EVA like this, especially when grabbing stuff from cargo containers, it can be very hard to hold position whilst floating around. So these ladders will allow me to stick kerbals into position where they can do work without having to A. use a lot of EVA fuel and B. float around everywhere. So let's see. One there. And if you watch footage of astronauts on EVA around ISS, they do a similar thing. They're rarely just floating around. They're always at least tethered to something. Nice big bank of batteries there. We will be expanding that. Turn the lights off yet. Whoa, we're a bit fast. We can use 
is so that is there. Nice, and on this other truss would be a good place as well. Don't know what that was. And that's something I kind of wish Kerbal Attachment System had, was an EVA tether. But, it's already got the winches, and a tether would be a bit more difficult. And I think, one more ladder, about there. There we are. Now we also need to work out some strutting for this. I've read that these struts have got some issues, so before we do that, we'll put the batteries on. It's always good to have some reserve power. Now let's use these handholds. So get in range of the ladder. And now it's just more of the same, flying around the station, attaching struts, fixing the nodes together. Just like what was done on ISS. Sure, the modules and nodes were brought up by robotic spacecraft at times, but they were always fixed to each other by astronauts on EVA. And I'm surprised Squad hasn't implemented something similar to Kerbal Attachment System already seeing as it's a very popular mod and the ability to fix spacecraft together and add parts after it's been launched is kind of a big deal I guess a little waggle test there to see where I need to attach things so yeah this ability to affix parts to an already launched spacecraft allows for some much more complex designs. For example, Scott Manley's Outland spacecraft from Interstellar Quest launched in three parts and secured with struts very similar to this. But, at any rate, after I attach these batteries, it'll be back to normal speed. And there we are. The station is now a lot more rigid and has a bit more power. So, in the next episode, we'll be continuing on with... I honestly don't know at this point. The only thing I know for certain is that we'll be seeing the re-entry of the first ATV. And I'm sure I'll figure something out to do in the meantime. So, until then, see you later.